All right, going to do a video refuting this Calvinist heresy that God is actually the author and cause of sin. Now, before a Calvinist says, oh, you're just misrepresenting Calvinism, I'm going to quote you a bunch of Calvinist preachers who themselves say this kind of stuff. So this isn't my words. This isn't me just falsely accusing Calvinism or, or misrepresenting it. The Calvinist theologians themselves openly say this. So here are some quotes from Calvinistic preachers saying that God not only authors sin and is causing sin, but even created sin. Okay. This is a, a quote from Jonathan Edwards. He says, God did from all eternity will or decree the commission of all sins of the world because of his permissive and his, and his free and real will. So he's decreeing the commission of sins. This is a, a quote from Joannes Priscator, Pris, Pris, however you say his name. He says, God made Adam and Eve to this very purpose that they might be tempted and led into sin. And by the force of this decree, it could not be otherwise, but that they must sin. So he's saying that basically he's forcing them to sin, essentially. This is a quote from uh, William Twice, another Calvinist. God is the author of that action which is sinful by his irresistible will. This is a quote from uh, Gordon H. Clark, another Calvinist. He says, Let it be unequivocally said that this view certainly makes God the cause of sin. God is the sole ultimate cause of everything. There is absolutely nothing independent of him. He alone is the eternal being. He alone is omnipotent. He alone is sovereign. This is their word. This is their words, not mine. This is a quote from uh, R.C. Sproul. God desired for man to fall into sin. I am not accusing God of sinning. I am suggesting that God created sin. Yeah. I, I mean, aside from this being borderline blasphemous, this is totally anti-scriptural. And again, you if you're a Calvinist, you can't say, oh, you're misrepresenting Calvinism, because I just quoted you five, uh, at least five separate Calvinist preachers all saying the same thing. So this isn't my word. This is what your theologians say. But again, this is totally antithetical to what the word, it's not just unbiblical, it's actually anti-biblical, okay? First of all, God does not decree or will unrighteousness or evil. He actually woes against it, okay? Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that right grievousness, 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 sorry, which they have prescribed. Isaiah 3, verse 11. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Isaiah 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know, that's kind of what Calvinism does. When you make God the author of sin, you're basically attributing the works of the devil to God. You're putting, you're basically calling evil good and good evil. Next point is that God leads away from temptations to evil. He doesn't cause them. James chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. A little side note too, some people will you know, blame the devil for their sins. In most cases, it's just your own flesh. In most cases, you have no one to blame but yourself and your own sinful flesh. Okay, uh, You can't blame the devil and you most certainly can't blame God because if you're a Calvinist, you can just blame God for your sins. You know, It's, it's disgusting, but verse 14 shows it's actually just mostly, most of the time, it's just your own flesh. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, escape that ye may be able to hear to bear it. Sorry, Matthew chapter not good at reading on computer. Matthew chapter six verse thirteen, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He's leading away from temptations to evil, not not causing it or forcing it against your own will. Okay. Next point is that God is grieved by sin. Okay. We, I want to point this out. If God is grieved by sin, what, it, it, but then he decrees it, why is he grieving over his own decrees? Why is he grieving over his own will? You know, he decrees it, but then he's grieving over it. It's like, what? doesn't make any sense. But, uh, and, and again, if you're a Calvinist, you'll find some way to try to twist the scriptures, but there's no, it doesn't make any scriptural sense because obviously our human logic, we can't understand God, but, God decrees sin, but then all of a sudden he's grieved by it. You know, the God of Calvinism is a walking contradiction. But uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that, the imag and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Uh, 
So he's grieving over the over the wickedness of mankind. But wait a second, I thought he ordained it. I thought he decreed their sin. So why is he grieving over his own decrees? Interesting, 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 interesting God you serve if you're a Calvinist. Uh, certainly not, certainly not the God of the Bible. It's a false God for sure. But Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous. Being grieved by their sin. Again, why is he grieving over his own decrees? Uh, Ezekiel chapter 6, verse 9. And they have, and they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes, which go a whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. He's broken by their whorish hearts. But then I thought he decreed all sin. I thought he actually caused and created sin. So why is he grieving that? Why is he grieving over his own uh, decree and will? See, if you're a Calvinist, you know you really have you really have no answer to that. You know that actually makes any scriptural has any kind of scriptural consistency or, or logic to it, scriptural logic, because you, your own preachers say that God is causing and even forcing people to sin against their will. But then we see God being grieved against sin, leading away from temptations to evil and woeing against those who are wicked. But if we're going to be consistent with Calvinism, he's basically just contradicting himself because he's woeing against his own decrees. He's leading away from his own decrees. He's grieving over his own decrees. You know, Calvinism is a false doctrine, and the God of Calvinism is a false god. I, I have no, uh, I, I have no hesitancy to say that whatsoever. The God of Cal when you hear, when you hear a Calvinist describe God, it's it's blatantly a false god. Okay, I'll put it this way. I've heard it once. I once heard it said that the God that basically Calvinism makes God worse than the devil because the devil only tempts you with sin, but God actually causes and forces you to sin against your will. So. The God of Calvinism is, I would say, the devil, but in some ways he's worse than the devil. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.